Hi everyone, a whole lot, lot of red, red here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this new Lucky Project, Sex, Money, Drugs. Lucky is a Chicago rapper who has been in the game for a long time and took a while to build up to the uh, commercial release of his first studio album, which happened last year, Flawless Like Me. I didn't think much of the record. I gave it a one, if I recall correctly. But you know what? I figured I would give uh, Lucky another try, especially considering the uh, reception of that review and a lot of the, uh, you know, implications that uh, I was missing something about his sound, about his style. And I figured, you know what, why not do it again, especially since, uh, for Lucky, I guess the commercial album Floodgates have opened, and he has essentially rushed out another project a year later. So that leaves us with this album over here, which in terms of makeup, I appreciate being a, a lot more direct and just a shorter to the point as this thing is just 33 minutes or so, 15 tracks, as opposed to the almost hour that his last project spanned. I guess uh, the brevity is nice, but uh, I'm not really hearing a whole lot of, in terms of a change in pace, lyricism, anything, which I suppose makes sense. Uh, Lucky has a passionate fan base for what he does. He is, I guess, just kind of sticking to what works, but I'm personally not seeing what is so uh, captivating about it, I guess. I mean, there are some interesting beat choices on the project here and there, uh, most notably on the first track, Toonvert, where Lucky can be heard rapping over uh, these extended, strange, plucky string samples. The perks in the background may be super plain and bland, but again, this uh, plucky little lead that's happening uh, goes off. But Lucky himself uh, sounds barely alive on the track, drugged out of his mind possibly, and he just doesn't really sound like he's in a state to do much of anything, much less rap or come up with a memorable lyric. And look, I mean, you know, things like uh, mumble rap and auto crooning and, you know, more melodic flows and lyrics that just aren't that intelligible uh, or contain a lot of slang or slurred speech, that's been a thing for a long time now. And I think it's one thing to have your words on a record uh, not be completely readable sometimes, or, you know, be a little blurred in some ways. Uh, but it's another for someone like Lucky to hit the mic sounding like he's essentially zombified and maybe doesn't even want to be there, or at least I can't really tell because uh, he comes across just so numb and emotionless and completely and utterly checked out, which is even more so the case for the following No Bap, which has an even more boring instrumental. Things do pick up on the following super ski, but only because of these triumphant little synth horn lines that uh, are kind of nice ear candy. Lucky does actually come through uh, with a kind of sticky refrain on this one. Uh, love who I love, X out who I can't. But one thing about this track and many others on this record that bugs me is there's not really a progression or flow to much of any of it. And the songs kind of end when it sounds like Lucky vocally begins to like just lose momentum and just kind of, you know, lose his speed. He's just like kind of progressively deteriorating across the length of every song here. And uh, they sort of finish around when he just kind of sounds the most tired, like when the sleepy time tease really kicking in. The following Gemini Love features a kind of sparkly cloud rap instrumental that's uh, odd and interesting. It's like something I could hear someone uh, uh, such as Dean Blunt on top of. I do appreciate some of Lucky's lyrics on this track about uh, feeling emotionally guarded and kind of paranoid. But again, given that he can't really build out a verse or structure a song uh, in any way whatsoever, it doesn't really add up to much as he's throwing these statements out here and there. Around the midpoint of the record, uh, we get some instrumentals that have a bit more pep in their step, and I think as a result, Lucky does wake up a little bit. But as he raises his energy levels, the vocal fry, the incredibly deep creakiness of his voice just intensifies and gets, uh, to my ears, really annoying and borderline unlistenable. Uh, uh, and it's all relative because even in his most hype moments, a Lucky sounds like he's slowly succumbing to the effects of long-term sleep deprivation. At least the more laid back and atmospheric vibes of a beat like what you get on Straight Syrup uh, matches his vibe a bit more, as do the kind of throwback guitars and 
keys straight out of the 70s on Purple Heart Ski. But still, this track feels kind of unfinished, much like everything else here. Karma a Bitch, unfortunately, doesn't really bring the thematic focus that I hoped a song with that title would. And in addition to that, the track Pop Star uh, just left me feeling worried, especially with Lucky spitting lyrics like, can't give up on drugs, uh, talking about them killing him, which in a way is, yeah, one of the realest moments on this record, and not because Lucky is saying anything deeply profound about this. He's just coming across performance-wise and, and, and vocally uh, like he has an issue, and I hope that he, you know, seeks help or that someone intervenes before this becomes like a serious, serious problem. Yeah, I'm not really seeing what this record is a celebration or embodiment of other than just being blasted out of your mind, uh, which is not a bad topic or theme to approach, but uh, at least the best records with that in mind at least give the listener uh, an insight to the feeling or the sensation of that. And I think I've commented on this before. Lucky pretty much just sounds like, you know, this whole haze and everything is just in his own head. And all you can really do is just watch this guy uh, just be completely off planet Earth uh, in another galaxy. Though, again, I do think there are some instrumentals on this record that uh, uh, fit that vibe a bit better, but uh, believe me, it's not by much. The production on this thing is pretty ramshackle, especially on the rhythmic end, and there's not a whole lot of dynamics, change-ups, flavor. It's just dreadfully boring to listen to, uh, even in its best moments. So yeah, I'm feeling a, a light two on this. Tran, Zishin, have you given this record a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, a lucky forever.